Ladies and gentlemen, very good evening and welcome to the Red and Blue, Red and Blue Review, everybody. I am your host. My name is Nick Philpott, and tonight you will be able to see, hopefully, shortly, Ian Lyons. Uh, and later on during the show, I'm hoping also to be joined by Jill Holyoke, who is out there, but uh, he's just struggling with his cameras to get it, come and join us live. I hope you're all well. Um, this evening, we will be talking about the two games, the Norwich City away game at Carrow Road and today's debacle in the uh, Emirates FA Cup against Derby. Uh, we'll be also announcing a new competition. Are you coming to join me, Ian? I hope you are. We'll be, uh, be announcing a new competition for your opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to win another one of these, okay? They are now in absolute gold dust, and hopefully you'll have an opportunity to do it. Uh, well done to Alf, who won in the last one last week. There'll be a new one, so hopefully sometime this evening, as long as we get our technical issues going on. Um, we'll also be ca catching up with your questions, I'm hoping to, along the way. And I have to say to you, the questions have been coming in, in their thousands. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are one of the Roy Out Brigade, please turn off now because that's not what you're going to do. Um, uh, so you can hear, somebody said they can hear some buzzing. Nothing like doing a bit of a test beforehand. Um, so uh, don't forget where you can find us out in this, in this social media planet of ours. You can find us on Twitter, you can find us on YouTube, Big Heads Media at any time to either watch or listen or download this or any of our previous podcasts, simply go to redandbluereview.co.uk uh, for all the links to all our previous catalogue. Um, Lucy, talk to me, please, because I can't see or hear anybody. Um, I'm so here. Ian's going to be reviewing the Norwich game and probably go through some of the some of today's rubbish. Uh, but I'm hoping to take some of your... It would be nice to get somebody else live on air. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a new extension to our software, our BeLive software, and they are struggling in the background um, to actually make use of it, hence why Ian hasn't yet joined us. Oh, I can see Ian's face here. Ian, can you hear me? Yeah, he's a Simon Philpot. Good evening, Simon Philpot. He was whinging, and that's my brother, Simon. He was whinging the other week that we never mention him on the show, even though he puts loads of comments on the page. Uh, and he never said that. He, he said that we never so good evening. Nigel, I can see you're out there. Tom Clark, Samuel, thank you for everything you do on the show. Uh, Curtis, Simon, how you doing, my man? Thank you for joining us this evening. Jordan, I hope you're well. Adrian, Andy, Stacey, Lee Lockwood, hello, mate. Uh, oh, good blimey. Nice of you to join us. Better late than never. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got me now? Yeah. Sorry, I was I was watching you. I was watching you going on, and it's saying you're live, and I'm just. Merrily along, smiling away, as you know, it's my disposition. Yeah. And um, then all of a sudden I can see that you, you're just wittering away. So I thought I'd save the viewers from listening to you for too much oh, longer. To you, weren't even, you weren't even on the screen. You weren't even on the screen. <laughs> Some people would say that was thankful. Graham Kitcher, I can see you. Charlie Byrne. Uh, who else have we got? Simon Cribbins, away day eagle. Hello, mate. Oh, I hope you're well. Um, so... Uh, Sam Hope, Nigel Crouch is on there, Simon Beams, Tony Six, and uh, is that Tony Sticks Tofield is watching? Matthew Stevens, hi guys, very good evening, and thank you for joining us on this, what are we, Sunday evening, are we? Yeah, we are Sunday evening, are we? Sunday, mate, yeah, tomorrow's work, oh God. You lot all back to work tomorrow, those of you who haven't liked me being back, uh, so uh, Ian was there, I was, I saw, uh, Lucy's writing to me, sending me messages, I like that picture over your left shoulder, mate. So you've got a palace shirt on, and now you just covered it up. Why is that? Oh, it's cold in here. That's why. There you go. Big girl. So where do you want to start, mate? And there's 73 people watching. Thank you to each and every one of you, wherever you are watching all over the planet. Thank you for joining us. Um, I suppose we ought to start at the uh, at Carrow Road, really, uh, Norwich City. Um, yeah, I mean... You're right. I mean, it's just been a season so far. Well, certainly the last three or four weeks have been double headers. So we've got a lot to cover tonight. So I'll just quickly go through that game. Clearly, we were... Go on. Go oh, on, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. So clearly we went in, in with, with more injuries uh, and more kids on the bench. Um, but obviously Norwich were <coughs> the bottom of the table. So we were expected to get something from it. Um the match itself was uh, was a funny one. I, th you know, it just had that feeling of 
being a match too far for me, certainly for a number of the players. Um, and it, but having said that, it got off to a positive start, didn't it? And um, we had a shot early doors from Luca, which just went wide to the post. Um, and then all of a sudden, as is our one, uh, we just dilly dally with it. We let the team come on to us, uh, and Pookie had already made one run that caught us out, uh, and he made another run which the block went in on, but it then fell to Cantwell. Yeah. I mean, it couldn't, it, there were three, four defenders around him, but it fell to him. He was being played on side as well by, I thought it was McCarthy on the far side, uh, but regardless, he was still found the ball and sl- slot it away and we were one nil down after four minutes. But I, um, want to, I, I want to stop you there. Okay. For, for okay. Those, those of you who don't know, um, I actually went to Carrow Road. I had a, I had a good day out uh, with, and it was one of those games and you're right, it was one of those games where it seemed like a game too hard, too, you know, too far for us with all the injuries and everything else. But um, it's the two goals, both the goals, you're going to come on to the second one in a minute, but the, both the goals, they were differing opinions from the stands. Now, you've got to realise we were, the away fans are actually positioned at the end where both goals were scored. So obviously one in each half, yeah? So the Cantwell goal, uh, from where we were, there was no doubt, no doubt whatsoever in the crowd, um, even though the linesman didn't give it, didn't raise his flag because they're not supposed to now, the VAR would mark that offside, okay? We were absolutely confident that it's going to be marked offside but VAR, once again, worked against us. And I know we're going to be coming up to VAR later on. Worked against us. And uh, he was played on side. Goal stood. Uh, it was a bit of a... We couldn't believe it. I mean, to the point where I was with Grant Saunders. Good evening, Grant. And he actually messaged out live on to his own channel, to his page, the Eagles have landed page. He actually... Guys, was that really offside? And then the messages start coming back from home saying, yeah, that was off. He, he was actually offside. Uh, he was being played on by, was it Tompkins who played it onside? No, no, I thought it was either it was either Kelly or McCarthy okay. who found okay. themselves at, at there, but they, they weren't in the line anyway. And there, there were two people that uh, they were playing on. But nevertheless, we found ourselves a goal down. <laughs> and, um, you know, Palace fans uh, across the world were just, just, just thought, yeah, of course. If you want to, you want to get yourself out of a rut. Just come and play us. It'll be no problem. We'll give you a goal head start, you know, and just do what you like. Um, but after that, then what pleased me was that we actually started to take the game to them. We didn't sit back. Fortunately enough, I mean, this is the one thing with conceding uh, and, and obviously conversely scoring early goals is that there's always time for the team that go that goal down to actually come back and do something about it. So. Um, on 10 minutes, the game had opened up. Pookie's runs were still causing us problems. Uh, and then he just made this lovely run through from a, a long ball. And a long ball seems to be a ball that's catching us out a lot. There were a number of long balls that caught us out today as well. Um, and Tompkins got a last-ditch tackle in, uh, which then went to VAR for a possible red card. Uh, but fortunately enough, VAR came to our rescue in that particular instance and he was uh, just like millimetres offside. Uh, and then I've written here, the game then ebbs and flows. Max Meyer isn't getting into the game much as uh, as he's on the wing and is either out-muscled or is getting caught in possession. I know we'll probably talk about Max throughout the day, uh, throughout the show anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, and But on the other wing, Wilf is turning the ball over or, or is being fouled. I mean, every time he got the ball... They were just doubling, tripling up on him and he was just getting turned over. Uh, but he was giving the ball away a lot. So wherever we gave it on the wing, we just weren't seeing it to come back. We weren't winning the possession. Um, <clears throat> Gyro Riederveld, who's putting in another solid showing, then makes a great run into the box. Uh, only instead of with the goal at his mercy, you'd expect someone like PVA in that position to have had a shot. He tries to square it and squares it straight to their centre-back. You know, and you just think, oh, God. But up until then, I mean, Gyro had been playing well. Um, so the game had petered backwards and forwards and until 45 minutes when uh, another long ball, because we're trying to push high, unlike us, we're actually taking the game to them. <coughs> um, the ball comes over, Sacco knows it's going over his head, so then tries to turn around and stick his leg out to get a toe on it. And then, ping, his hamstring goes. So... <coughs> 
at half time, he then gets subbed for Kiate. Uh, how? I mean, that, that sounds quite a bad injury for Sako. So for Sako. So I'm not entirely sure as to whether we'll see him in a Palace shirt again. To be honest, because I, you know, with the Sako one, it was actually a come. It came up in conversation in the t- in the stand on at Carrow Road that we think that he. I mean, if you looked at him, he didn't look right from the start. Okay? No. Yeah. Then to, then to make matters worse, he then goes and pulls out of the tree as well. Uh, Paul Holden, I've just seen your message in the chat. Have I added uh, Marlon King to the, the hated 11? Ian, I'm tasking you with the next week, OK, to uh, compile on one of your lovely spreadsheets the hated 11 that we discussed last week. Who else needs to be in our hated 11? Uh, Lewis Dunk's in there. Uh, and obviously now Marlon King's on there. So... Uh, who else do you want in your hated 11, ladies and gentlemen? You tell us. Ian, I interrupt you. You carry on. This is where I get that long list of things I've got to do out, is it? And yeah, just put it yeah, in the bottom. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be honest. Thank, thanks for throwing me under that bus. Right. <laughs> uh, right. So second half starts. Keate comes on. Uh, 55 minutes. Myers continuing to have to drift in for off the wing to pick up the ball and influence play. Uh, but the pressure from Palace is building. Um, he then has a shot, but it's even easily saved by Krull. 60 minutes, then Wickham comes on for Meyer. Clearly, Hodgson isn't seeing what he wants from Max and wants more of a direct threat. So Wickham, who, to be fair, played, uh, had a reasonably good cameo at home the week before. You know, uh, you'd expect to see him carry that on when he comes on. Um, also, on 60 minutes, that's a relatively early sub for Roy. So yeah. is Roy actually understanding, you know, that in order to influence games, you've got to give people a chance to influence games. Uh, 73 minutes, McLean then hits the bar from Norwich uh, from inside the box. Whether or not Gaeta had it covered is a mute point because I think if it had been three inches lower, it, it would certainly have still hit the bar, but he might have got his gloves to it anyway. Um, uh, and if that had gone in, it gone in, then in all honesty, I think that would have been game over 2-0 and then we would just wouldn't have had a clue. Um, 83 minutes is where the game turned, actually. And the irony is, is it turned because Steeperman comes on for Norwich uh, um, and then Perrick for Palace as well at the same time. And Steeperman uh, is then booked immediately for his first touch in the ball as he up, gut bends Riedeveld. Uh, and then a couple of minutes later, uh, Brandon Perrick is then in the mix and wins a ball on the edge of the box as well as we're, as it's bouncing around. He, he out muscles their centre back, runs it along the back the, the box into Wolf's um, path, who then takes on Max Aaron's, gets a ball in across, and then Wickham just toe posts it in the back of the net. And before everyone's jumped up out of their seats, everyone's going, "Oh no, offside! Oh my god!" Uh, <coughs> And even on the TV, they were saying, oh, no, that's offside. Nigel Spatman never, ever has a good word to say about us over all these years of him being commentating uh, on our games. You know, he's just, I don't know what it is about him, but nevertheless, he doesn't give us any credit. And then even he turned around and said, do you know what? I think this might be onside. And uh, everyone's like going, really, really, really? And again, <clears throat> it was clear on, it was clearly onside. It wasn't one of these millimetre ones. It was almost like a centimetre. And at VAR terms, that's that's a massive gap nowadays. It was one of so, those things, again, in, in the stand, it was one of those things in the stand where you, you're actually saying to yourself, well, actually, the longer this goes on with the review of VAR, there's got to be something here. Something yeah, here. exactly. The tighter it must be, or, or yeah. actually, as you, as you quite rightly say, it, you know, it's likely to be overturned. But um, so, goal, goals given, one all. Um, and <coughs> the game then just peters out. I think getting to one all, I don't think, I think no one wants to lose it from that period. Uh, and having gone into the game, expect or hoping that we were actually going to turn them over because they were conceding goals left, right, and centre. I think after four minutes, I would have settled for one one. So that's the first game done. Yeah. Um, so, so ladies, of- ladies and gentlemen, we are purposely. Scooting through it because we want to get to your questions. Uh, it's Shell James, shame Jill's not with us because there's a couple of questions that I know that he would be all over like a rash. So we're, we're purposely uh, going to run through these tonight because the, the two reviews simply because we've got so much other stuff that we want to ca- ca- catch up on. Um, guys, I'm looking at all your comments in the chat before we, uh, Ian starts talking about the Derby game. Away Day Eagle said, If Sacco played like he's playing now, 
uh, when he was on loan with us, then we wouldn't have signed him in the first place. Um, Nigel Cratchit says, son-in-law who yellow and green to the core said 1-1 one, one was a fair result. And you know what? Uh, I think it probably was. I came away from there not disappointed with the point, uh, uh, the way that we looked at it. I think we, I think we agreed five points over the, the three games over Christmas was a, a good return. I, I, I've got no issues with that. We're, we're still accumulating points nicely. Okay, we're still in a healthy position in the league. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. I mean, a couple of stats uh, from that game. Norwich have dropped 14 points from winning positions in the Premier League. Uh, and West Ham have dropped the only team to have dropped more from 15 so obviously clearly they were two good teams <coughs> to play at the time Wickham's equaliser for us was his first Premier League goal since netting against Man City back in November 16 um, and then the 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 go on do the Perrick one yeah I was just about to say and then the final one is uh, Brandon Perrick at 18 years 22 two days old became the second youngest player to feature for Palace in a Premier League game, uh, the youngest being George Endar versus Liverpool in November. 92. Wow, I feel old. Uh, 17 years and 341 days. George, George, George Endar. I remember it well. In fact, that, that's like 28 years ago. That's older. That's another 10 years older than he would have been at the time he made his debut. That's just bonkers. If you'd have, if you'd have put that into a... Um... If you'd have put that into a quiz, I would not have got that fact in a million years of, without the research for the show. Um, I would never have worked out that George and was our youngest. I mean, you also massively, your mind also massively goes to AWB or Wilf, doesn't it? I mean, because it would do. Um, logic would dictate it's going to be one of those two, especially AWB. But George and I would never have got that in a million years. <laughs> George and eh? Whatever happened to him? Whatever happened to George. Anybody, <laughs> know, anybody know still in connection with George and let us know in the chat. Keep, uh, keep, keep, keep. <laughs> uh, so, some of the talking points from the game, obviously, Sacco's injury, Wickham and Perrick's influence. As I say, Wickham, uh, uh, this is obviously before today's game, Wickham looked as though, OK, all right, Mr Glass has got through yet another 30 minutes without getting injured. Uh, then Perrick, I was really impressed with the way he actually just got the ball and drove, got the ball and drove. And um, again, with us and under Roy and his tactics, it's a lot is passing sideways, recycle the ball, recycle the ball. When everyone, anyone, whenever anyone of our players gets the ball in the final third, they've rarely got someone in front of them. So it's important that if you get the ball, you actually drive with the ball. So that was interesting. Um, the only thing I would say uh, at this point, and we put talking points from after the game was, what does Maya being taken off and being shoved on the right again out of position mean for his future under Roy? Um, well, a number of people were on the, the Facebook and Twitter were, you know, suggesting that, and we've done it on the, on the pod as well before, is suggesting that Maya's best position by a long, long way is in, a, in, a, in an advanced central midfield role, which ironically he got today. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, let's, do, let's just do, uh, I want to touch on Conor Wickham, if you don't mind. Um, I think for all his faults, for all his lack of goals, what did you just say? 2016 or something, his last game, his last goal. Yeah. Yep. For all his faults, uh, yes, he's Mr. Glassman and everything else. What we've been crying out for all season is a striker in the right place at the right time. That run that he made, Okay, he needs to take full credit for. Okay, uh, his match, his fitness was obviously up there for him to get into that position in the first place. It was the same old story. You know, we just assumed he was offside, like everybody else. We thought he was offside, but he needs credit. And well done, Connor, for getting in, come, making that run, late run. That was an onside run to be able to tap the ball home. And his his reaction, his goal scoring reaction, um, is something a bit like the Jed in that. Pulled out of the shirt thing. Did you see it when the when the camera pans to him when he when they realised that hang on, I mean this is going to stand. Yeah, he, he went like that. It was as though all that lost time has just gone out of his body. Okay, and he just celebrated. And, and also, then he pops a muscle. And he probably pops a muscle in the process. But then Tim Crawl comes out because uh, Colin Wickham gave that to the Norwich. Yeah, player. I saw that. Hip switch connection. Tim Crawl comes out the goal, giving it to him, and who steps in? 
James McCarthy. Now, James McCarthy, he loves a punch up at the best of times. He's one of those blokes that if he wasn't a, wearing a Palace shirt, he would probably be in that hated 11 because he's a nasty bastard. But the irony being is that when you've got the cameras panning on Wickham at six foot six or whatever, Tim Craw at six foot three, and then you get just the, the top of someone's head coming in and then shoving little his arms up. It was, it was obviously James McArthur. Uh, they, they could have done panning it down a bit just to get in full <laughs> shot, couldn't they? Well, um, you kept, sorry, mate. You carry on to make a start on the derby one, if you like. Right, OK. So, uh, four points in the last two games. OK, we are... Roy is... We'll come on to this later, but he's definitely what they would term in the business world, sweating his assets, uh, getting as much as he can out of such a small group of players. Um, and four points, you know, I think we would have all signed up for that before uh, before uh, the week at uh, the week started. So Derby today, before in the after the game, uh, obviously Roy mentioned how Wilf uh, at Norwich was even doubtful for the game and he, he because and that explains why he was in my eyes pretty woeful he was giving the ball away so much he was turning it over he was just getting irate they were getting on top of him I, I agreed that the ref wasn't necessarily giving them as much as you would expect him to get because they were just kicking lumps out of him to be fair as most teams do nowadays so obviously after the match, you find out that he was injured and then, you know, and he did that one bit of uh, trickery to get past Aaron's to set the goal up. So, you know, it's a fair play. But on that basis, Hodgson said, look, you know, I'm going to risk quite a few players. It's, a, it's essentially going to be an under-23 side uh, that I'm going to have to put out. So when I turn up today and see Hennessy in goal, Kelly right back, Kiate, Cahill, Riedeveld as a back four, then you've got Perrick uh, and Ayu on the wing. You've got McCarthy, Luca, and Maya. Maya central midfield, uh, and then Wickham up front. I'm thinking, oh wait a minute, surely we should be resting these people. You know, we're complaining about the injuries we're getting. They're obviously blowing out their backsides. Why are we starting with such a strong side when you come out and said we're going to play under twenty threes? Clearly. Really pleased to see Perrick get a start, and I think he deserved that off the back of his little cameo uh, against Norwich. Uh, on the bench, uh, and it's also really good to see Cahill back as well. I think he's been a massive miss, um, yeah, and it was no good, good to see him back. So, <clears throat> on the bench, we had Tompkins, MacArthur, Henderson, Woods, Kirby, McGregor, and Daly. So, a lot of kids on the bench, granted. But nevertheless, it looks like he's going to go for the win. So after a bright, a bright start, after, you know, the ball the, the kicks off, Derby have come there to suck the life out of the game. You can see that from the first minute. They're just sitting back, sitting back, sitting back and just waiting and just home it to hit us on the break. Now, obviously, we've spoken about it when West, the way West Ham played get like that against us. We struggle against teams like that. We don't have the way Roy sets us up is to counter-attack. It's not to, to initiate the attack. It's not to be thoughtful in possession so that people are passing and moving. Um, we just don't do that. Um, so it was a bit of a shock to see Perrick get the ball, weave his way in between two players, clearing on goal. And if it wasn't for a great save by their keeper, he could have, he, he, you know, we could have been one nil up, and he could have been on the on the <coughs> the goal tally already. It was like it was a great little bit of skill. He could have been, he could have been, that could have been hero status right from the start. Ladies and gentlemen, out in the chat, I'm just interrupting Ian for a reason because, as you can see, uh, I have just changed my microphone. Uh, some of you are saying that my sound was dropping in and out. Um, is that still the case? Yes or no in the chat? Am I a bit clearer than I was? Please let me know. And a very warm welcome to somebody who you Who's don't that? often say. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, one of the hardest working people on Red and Blue News in the background. Is the Lucy. hardest? No, no. Yeah, probably the hardest. Ian does bugger all, as we know. Okay. Well, it's just, it just, he rocks up here at about five to eight on a Sunday night and spouts crap for a couple of hours, okay? Then in the, in the background, <laughs> somebody, somebody who works her 
little sweet butt off, okay? Warm welcome, everybody, to Lucy Usher. Lucy, thank you for stepping in for Jill at the last minute. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. And uh, yes, we're absolutely aware that you didn't go to the game today, but I've got questions from the audience coming up that you are going to be, I'd like your opinion on them, if that's okay with you. So thank you, thank you for joining us. Okay, no thank you for staying with us. That's now, okay. So Nick, just before we go on, um, yeah. I'm hosting a watch party to the Red and Blue News um, Facebook. So I'm going to try and cover some comments on there because I don't think you see them. I don't get to are. see them. So, so those that... of you that are watching that, hey, Summer, Neil and Russell, I can see you all there. Uh, I'll, uh, if you put your comments in I can see that there's Ben as well I will try and get some of your comments on the show too Thank you very much I, I, I can see the red and blue review ones but not the news ones so anybody else out there that wants to host a watch party it just shares what we're doing with your own personal group Okay, so feel free to do so host it on the, uh, other Palace pages bring them on Okay, let them see what the red and blue review is all about let them see what, what we do and what, how we spend our Sunday evenings together yeah, That's, exactly. Every, as right. many people Raise the awareness, and if anyone's got any, any interior design tips for Lucy and Nick, please feel free to comment in the section box below Look, as well. I could have something here. I don't mind red and blue review over the back there. I mean, your your interior design is nice. It's, be, it's certainly better than your own personal exterior design. Well, That's yeah, if only I could. Well, maybe next week I'll just go like this, and you'll just hear a voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are there. Look, right, there's, get on with it. Out, there's a result. Look, <laughs> yes, please. Get up, get on with it. Right. Okay. So, uh, where was I? Brandon. Brandon had a shot. Uh, was unlucky. Maya, who'd looked lively, uh, then had uh, on eight minutes. He, he looked lively. Everything was going through Maya. He'd won a couple of free kicks. Um, he was winning the ball, pushing through. Uh, breaking through the line and um, out on the, the left wing as we're attacking, their right back decides to jump up and land squarely right on his ankle and he's in a lot of pain and he's clearly done some sort of ligament damage to it, but he tries to play on. <clears throat> the game... Did you hear him squelch the... from the stands? Did you hear, actually hear him yelp from the stands? No, I didn't hear him yelp. I was the other end, but it, if I did, it'd, it'd be like a little church mouse with it. would be... Ah! Something along those lines. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing sound effects now. Blimey. Right? <laughs> I do a lot more than he's suggesting. Um, right. So the, the game then slips into a coma pretty much uh, with yeah. neither side willing to push the tempo until 36 minutes. That is when uh, Jaden Bogle steams down the right-hand side. Now, Bogle's a, Bogle's a steady championship right back yeah he's someone that i think we were interested in a couple of years back but he's not actually taken that massive step forward but nevertheless it does well Reader Bell doesn't get close enough to him shoves over a great cross now across it we're, we're a bit like dracula as a team we hate crosses and they're our weakness and then at the far post of course an ex palace striker martin chris martin sh sticks his right foot out outside of the foot and our six foot ten, you know, sprawl with his arms out, probably about seven foot four, goalkeeper waves it into the corner of the net. Now, before anyone suggests I'm blaming Hennessy, I'm not blaming Hennessy. Uh, <clears throat> there are a number of uh, things that conspired to that goal. One, that Jairo could have closed him down. Two, Kelly, Kelly at the back could have been a bit tighter and been aware that Chris Martin was there. It was a good finish. It was the only chance they, they essentially had until the very last five, two, uh, two or three minutes. Um, and of course, you know, we go a goal down. Um, and then we're struggling uh, and they're just sitting back again and we just still do not know what to do. There's no animation from Roy. Brandon Perrick from having a bright start looks lost out on the wing. People are hiding. We're just turning the ball sideways, sideways, backwards, sideways, sideways, without penetrating. There's no urgency. No, there is nothing there, is there? There was nothing there. No, not whatsoever. So half time comes, um, uh, and then they come back on the pitch. In fact, up until that point, I think I tweeted on the red and blue uh, Twitter page that uh, was was I bad for thinking that the half time penalty challenge was the highlight of the game so far. Because that was really funny. I like that. I love the love the little kids taking the shots. And and on a note as well, it was so good 
to see so many kids with their parents that were under 10 at that game today. So yep. if there's one thing we can take from this is that those poor little sods are being brought up in the right way not to expect their team to win week in, week out. They're going to have to, life is a roller coaster and you'll all be stronger for it. So well done to you parents. Um, <clears throat> right. So on 63 minutes, the crowd have fallen asleep uh, until when Huddleston and Luca then collide. Uh, there's a bit of a tussle. From where I was looking, it looked like Huddleston actually stamped on Luca, but having seen it on the TV afterwards, no, that didn't. wasn't the no, case. No, he didn't. Luca then obviously <clears throat> wants to murder him, uh, as the song goes. Uh, and then <clears throat> what? The, the one good thing out of it was VAR got the decision right. And secondly, well played and well done, Oliver. We don't give refs enough credit when they do things right. But he apparently took it off his own back to go to the monitor. Uh, he wasn't advised to go to the monitor. It was his decision, alleged, apparently. And he then made the right decision on the back. Why, so well why, why, why does history have to be made? And it's Palace that makes the history. OK, the first time ever... The linesman, has, uh, the referee decides to look at the monitor in the VAR in the United Kingdom. OK, it has to be at Sellers Park and actually has to be against us. Why is that the case? Well, the, the first ever VAR, VAR game in England was Palace Brighton, wasn't it? Or Brighton Palace. Correct. Sorry, Correct. sorry, I shouldn't, shouldn't be swearing at this time of night. So yeah. it was down on the south coast, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Down to 10 men. 1-0 down. Thanks, Luca. Uh, and also, for those of you that aren't aware... Historically, if you'd have been sent off in cup games, the ban would have been only relevant to cup games, but no longer. <laughs> um, yeah, if you remember, Hollibas Holly got um, sent off for the last game for Watford and then was banned for the FA Cup final and then the first two games of the season. So Luca will now miss the next three games. There's your answers to your question in the chat, Simon. Simon just asked that in the chat. Is it one or three game ban? 100% final answer. It's a three game ban, Simon. Straight red. Straight red. And also, just on that on that point, um, Ben Allen's raised um, that the ref went to the monitor after a Derby player actually asked the ref if he saw the headbutt. So, yeah. Yeah, he did, yeah. So, Michael well, Oliver, you're, saying, you're right. You're Michael Oliver, you're right. Actually, he deserves a bit of credit. A shame is it was against our one, one of our players, but you're, you're right. Oh, actually, Nigel Croucher is actually uh, disagreeing with what I've just said. Not history. A pitch side VAR, VAR monitor was used to award a penalty in the FA Cup tie between Liverpool and West Brom in 2018. VAR wasn't even around him, was it? In this country? Uh, in the Cup it was, wasn't it? In the FA Cup, not in the league. <coughs> well, that, that's what... Since it's been no, introduced in the league, it's not been used, but he may well be right. Yeah, he may well be right. He may well be right. Okay, history in the Premier League then, Nigel. Uh, if we're actually, just I'll get it absolutely right. History in the Premier League. Nigel, if we had a little, um, this is this is for, you know, Lucy. We need a geek of the week, little sting. Go geek of the week. <laughs> Nigel, you're the geek you, of the week. Well done, mate. You just right. got it, mate. <laughs> Well done for shutting him up as well. Right, <laughs> 70, 73 minutes, Tompkins comes on for Perrick. As I said before, Perrick has started to look a little lost. Um, he wasn't being involved in the game. I, I think that uh, I was, uh, while I was, you know, nodding off in the first half, I was looking at some of the, the social media and I think even some of the hacks were saying, just give Perrick the ball. He's touched it twice in 30 minutes. So <clears throat> Tompkins come on for Perrick. Um uh, you know, of course, it's a logical, logical sub. We're one nil down, struggling for injuries, and then Roy brings on a centre back for a winger. <coughs> Work that one out. Um, uh, that, was picked, that was picked up very heavily this afternoon on social media, and, and you're right uh, to raise it? the point. Okay. Yeah, it, it, right it, was, the point. It, it was just bonkers. Um, anyway, he does it, and we're now we're now showing a bit of urgency. I tell you what, I, what I haven't got my notes on. What I will say now is that. Jordan Ayew was the only one interested today. Uh, and when I say interested, I mean <clears throat> in a way that he gave the effort. He showed he was giving the effort. The amount of 80-yard, I think he did at least three 80-yard runs tracking back from the front 
when he was running past his midfielder, his wing back or his centre back or his defensive midfielder to put the challenge in. You know, it just bemuses me. So that poor guy, you know, fair play. I was one of his big, people will remember, a few, you know, way back in the podcast at the start of the season. Uh, I'm going, oh, what are we buying this guy for? He's absolutely next to bloody useless. You know, he's not going to be worth it. He's not, you know, not worth two million, let alone three. I'm taking all back. You know, he is worth every penny and more. Under so well two million pounds. Under two million pounds, my understanding. Okay, well, whatever it is, it's it's a steal, isn't it? It's a steal. So, uh, Tompkins on, uh, and then as soon as Tompkins comes on, of course, Riederveld, our left back, gets a hamstring injury, and it takes four four minutes for the bench to actually realise it. In fact, Tompkins runs over and stops them having a little bit of a conflab, a chin wag, and says, "Get someone on. He's lying down on the pitch over there. What are you guys doing?" So, well, yet another injury. And this comes back to what I was starting at, where I started from. Hodgson had said this was going to be a chance to rest people. Hodgson said we were going to play under 23 players. Okay, technically you can say we played two under 23 players, but he had a, he had a load more he could have put in. And now, as a result of Hodgson sweating in the assets and relying on the same people week in, week out, we are finding herself in a bigger hole. But anyway, we'll come on to that. Um, so Sam Woods comes on his place. Sam Woods actually did quite well. I saw him play uh, in the Colchester game and he looked really good in that. Uh, he was on, and in that, that game, I believe he played right wing, uh, right right back. But uh, he looked comfortable, put in a few good challenges, um, did what he needed to do. The game then, drifts away from us. There was no urgency, no change, no goals. That's how I've uh, ended that. Um, as I said, a couple of points. Well done, Oliver, for using the monitor. Um, but what I what I think is happening to us in a minute is the death by a thousand cuts. Injuries, injuries, injuries. Roy is overworking the same players without giving others a chance. Um, it's, you know, the club's recruitment policy, we could go on and on and on. But we're in now in a position whereby whoever we get in, I don't think is going to be the answer to our questions and what we need. So I think we're in for lean times ahead, unfortunately. Right. OK, let me just jump in now. I just want to say, tell you what uh, Lee Lockwood just said. He said, I think uh, most of us got it wrong. We're talk- referring to uh, uh, Jordan Ayew. Um, and he said, I'm one of them. So uh, he's putting his hand up to it as well. Uh, Lucy, Jordan Ayew. What sort of seasons he had? Oh, immense. I mean, to be fair, it's not going to take too much to shine with uh, with our strikers at the moment. But I, I wasn't a fan of him end of last season. Um, and he's just proved everyone wrong, really, hasn't he? He's been incredible. And I think it was two million that we got him for. I think uh, yeah. he actually went Randy, down yeah. right, So just... He did. You know, he's, he's, he's won us a couple of games already. Uh, and those points are going to just prove him valuable. I so oh. love him. I'm just going to pick up on the point. Uh, I said right at the very top of the show when I was working on on my own, ladies and gentlemen, if you think this is going to be a Hodson out uh, hour, okay, you're wrong. Tyler K, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, mate, but you're saying, personally, I think we should look at Clinton Morrison as our next manager working alongside Roy to get his experience. So are you, are you saying that uh, Roy Hodson's going to be leaving us or Roy Hodson's going to lose his job because, because we went out of a cup game, Ty? Uh, that leaves clarity, please. Um, Jason Green, I was the, doing the same last season, but he's playing in with more confidence this season, and he's now adding goals. Mike Howe, I can see you out there. Keith Diamond, I can see you out there. Max Francis, all oh, Teresa, I know you're there. Ben Allen, I know you're there. Thank you to each and every one of them. Um, so, what we're going to do while we're waiting for Ian to come back is we're going to do a um, a quick. <coughs> update for you on the mug situation we are launching a new competition this is for the month of january first of all okay this is called we're going to call this the january competition uh well done alf weller for winning the christmas competition and posting a picture of himself and his new red and blue review mug exhibit a has he left us has he uh yeah i think he's just dropped out he'll, he'll okay 
And so he, he posted that on the on the page this week. So congratulations, Alf. Well done, mate. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. He actually was genuinely pleased to be a, uh, one of the very few people that's actually only one. So do you want to be a proud owner of an exclusive red and blue mug? Then simply enter this month's competition by answering the following questions. Do you want to do the question or do you want me to do it? Ian. Well, I can do it if you want. Go for it, mate. Your competition, you set it. You, go for Clearly, it. Clearly, I don't do enough on this. No, I mean, you, you don't do bug right. as it is. So <laughs> <laughs> right. The question is, the question is, how many goals will be scored? In the... Please. Sorry. Hang on, I'll hit the mute button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Or the off button to do. Um, how many how many goals how many goals will be scored in a Premier League between the tenth and the twelfth of January? And as a tiebreaker, what will the score be in the Palace versus Arsenal game, which incidentally is on the Saturday? That was aimed at me, ladies and gentlemen. Right, I want to clarify. I want to clarify the question, okay? Because you haven't clarified it enough, okay? How many goals will be what? scored in the Premier League? That's not Palace. That's not just for the Palace games. In the Premier League, between the tenth and the twelfth, inclusive, I presume, because it. Yeah, in the Premier League. Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't say so. So I'm just clarifying says, how many between goals the will be scored and the 12th. in the Premier League between the 10th and the 12th inclusive and the tiebreaker will be uh, and what will the, the Palace Arsenal score be on the Saturday, not the Sunday, which is a dig at me and he knows why. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll put the question up on the uh, Facebook page anyway. So, you know. Yeah. So get your answers in. Okay, your chance to win that. It'll come straight to your home within a few working days after and what date will we announcing the winner of this one at the end of the month? Well, uh, well, uh, no, it'd be next week. I would have thought. Okay, fine. Yeah, because cool. if it's after next week, people will get the answer right, won't they? <sighs> Another dig. Um, how, many, <laughs> well, how, how many goals have you scored in the Premier League between the tenth and twelfth of January? And as a tiebreaker, what will his score be in the Palace Arsenal game? Okay, so. Where do we start on the questions? I mean, I've got my own lot here. You've got your own lot there. So you want to go first? Yeah, okay, all right. Um, Lucy, jump in at any point now, okay? Right, Lucy, this is a question for you then, Lucy. Andrew Adams says, why are we getting so many injuries? Is it down to bad luck, lack of fitness or poor training? Tricky one. And I think it's one that we said last year as well, last season, um, I think around this period we had uh, a lot of injuries I don't know I don't know what it is we've had a lot of games this is what five games in three weeks or two and a half weeks very very busy and congested uh, Christmas period for the players I don't know what do you think I've got an opinion on this as well I actually think that there is something in the, in the question about training methods um, Roy said to said in his post-match press conference today in all his experience he's never I mean, you, you get a bit of bad luck from not time to time, and you even get some bad. I think we actually had a, a period last year where four our first four uh, back line were out as well at some point. But he said today, if you work out with the two that have been added to the list today, Maya and who is the other one, Riedeveld. Okay, that's eleven out of our starting eleven are now injured. He said, "How am I supposed?" You get a squad of twenty-four. We had, I think we actually registered twenty. Three or twenty-four. How is he supposed to put a first-team squad out next you know, against Arsenal when you get they're, they're, and they're not just they're not just little niggles. These are long-term injuries. If you know Joel Ward's still in a brace, uh, Gary Cahill, thank, thankfully, has now come back. But have they rushed him back? Sacco, they brought him back. He was still injured. He was clearly injured on uh, the other night against Norwich when the, the game kicked off. He then went and made it worse by pulling a hamstring. Um, there is something on the, there is something in the training methods because they are, they all seem to be the rips, tears and Ian, I can see you're, you're not, you're not convinced. Ladies and gentlemen, out in yeah. Chatland, I want to know, oh, Rob Donovan's actually just come up with a point. Age of the squad equals injuries. Yeah, there's a, there's a few comments on that actually. Um, too many games, small squad, says Sommer Kearson, Neil Chatterley. <laughs> Average age of the team is too old. Jairo Riederwald's 24, isn't he? 25. You know, yeah. I, I don't... I, don't get me wrong. I don't think there's only one real reason for it, apart from what I've touched on earlier, 
Roy is playing the same players week in, week out. He plays a system that relies on a lot of intense work. What I would say is that the injuries, very, very few of them have been impact injuries. Myers was today, obviously, but most of them have been muscle fatigue, strains and injuries of that nature. Too, too many games, so, yeah. Too many games, yeah. So part of that could be that too many games, you know, and he's not rotating his squad. He would argue that he hasn't got a squad to rotate. Some of us would disagree. Uh, but, you know, you, you play with what you've got. Um, and he's been successful so far, but at what cost? So I think that's where we probably need to leave that one. Lord, Lord, um, hang, hang, before you move on, Lord Glantz has just told me, uh, Paul Glantz has just said to me, uh, stop moaning. Hello, Actually, Paul. Paul, I've got something in my pocket for you. Hang on, let me just get it out. Here we go. Uh, there it is, it's right there. Um, Paul Glass just said, stop moaning, Nick. Well, I'm not actually moaning. I'm decrying the fact that we haven't got enough, a decent enough squad to be able to cover what is an important time. You know, we're sitting in ninth in the Premier League and I'm delighted that we are ninth. But with that squad, with let's just say, even if it's, it's you know, Roy's talking about 11 of them out. Let's just say, for example, six or eight of them are out long term, OK, uh, for a month or more. Where are we going to be at the end of that month period? You know, say in the middle of February, where are we going to be in the league? Not alarm bells, not panicking. I'm hoping we might actually have one or two players to come in on the transfer window before then. But you've got to be, you've got to be honest. I've never, Roy's right, and I've never seen it like this before, ever. I've never seen a squad so depleted with, uh, with numbers. But there you go. Um, so thank you for your point, Mr. Glance. I can see it out there. Lee Locke was saying, I will bet at the bottom dollar that it's definitely the training ground surface that's playing a massive part. So, OK, I'm going to answer that as well, if you don't mind, guys. I don't know if you're, any of you are aware of this, but uh, the Beckenham training ground is actually Sellers Park. It's actually Sellers Park. The Beckenham training pitch was the old Sellers Park pitch dug up, taken over on the flatbed lorry to Beckenham. It's actually Sellers Park that they're playing on in Beckenham. So... I'd like to know why Lee actually thinks it is that, because as you quite rightly say, they're two Deso pitches, so they should be exactly the same, exactly the same dimensions, which is what you'd expect of any yep. half sensible club or whatever. So, Lee, I mean, if you uh, if you can, just uh, they'd be interested to understand why you think that may be. I've got another question, if you want it. Go for it, man. Right, Musty Cham, um, thanks for contacting us. What do we think of Yairo Riedeveld? My opinion, apart from the amazing block in the West Ham game, is he's not a solid left-back at all. Um, I'll take that before throwing it to you, Luce. <coughs> I've, when he ca first came to the club, obviously from the Ajax Academy, technically proficient, I thought he was a really, really top player. Clearly, once uh, FDB went, he clearly fell out of favour, lost his way a bit, put on a few pounds... Um, but it's nice to see him back. I think he's solid, and I think he's only going to get better. Left back isn't his preferred position. It, he's normally a midfielder, sits in. I'd actually prefer to see him in, in Lucas' place, to be perfectly honest, and I think he'd be better suited there. But I think from what I've seen from him, considering he's been out for so long and we've got such a big crisis, have we really suffered that much? I'm not too sure. I'm going, to, I'm going to jump in before you do, if you don't mind, Lise. There's two, two things that come on. Where's your mute button? Two things came to mind there. Um, <laughs> one of them is obviously Roy doesn't fancy him. I mean, Roy clearly didn't uh, enjoy having him in the squad. He you know, It's only when we've actually hit this crisis that he'd been anywhere near the first-team squad. Uh, sometimes he wasn't even featuring on the bench. So that was obviously an issue. And now Roy's had to bite the bullet a little bit and bring him in. Well, again, he's now injured as well. Is that a fitness thing? The other thing, of course, is, you know, he's somebody who was telling us about his attitude. There was times where he's been fined time and time again for being late to training and not turning up on time. Um, you, you don't want somebody. That's probably why he's out of favour with the manager in the first place. You don't want somebody like that, you know, with that sort of attitude around the group. Lucy, you got any, any thoughts on it? Is that, is that, I thought I read, um, I think it was Matt Woosnam's uh, article the other day, who said that he's actually really impressed with his attitude, um, unless I'm thinking of someone else, but I'm pretty sure it was Jero. Um, to be honest, I haven't seen anything that I don't like. I, he looks pretty solid, pretty reliable. Um, I think sometimes you're just in Roy's books or you're not, and I don't think he has been, and I think it's just because of the injuries that um, he's there. And again, I haven't seen anything I don't like. 
I think he's a good squad player, really. Cool. Um, before you move on to your next one, Ian, uh, there's something that happened at Carrow Road the other night, and uh, it was just the way I, the place that I landed. I actually had standing right behind, directly behind a certain gentleman of senior years, much respected within the Palace community. Sir Les Fuller was only standing in front of me. He's, as you all know, he lives out in France. Les, I can see you're on the page, mate. He said, I'm sorry that he's been packing up his stuff and he's heading back home to France tomorrow. It was an absolute pleasure to see you at Carrow Road, mate. Lovely to see you looking so well as well. Uh, happy New Year to you and your family. And good luck with your International Palace page. Uh, you have Every bit of support from Red and Blue Review. If you need anything at all, mate, just give us a shout. Lovely to see you, buddy, and Happy New Year. Um, and safe travels. Um, right, so who, should, I, should I do one of mine? Yeah, uh, if you must. Okay, let's have a look. Wickham. Oh, this is Andrew Adams again, <coughs> funny enough. Uh, Wickham. I know he's coming back from an injury, but he's not done a lot. Max seems to have had the central role, but for me, he didn't do enough and unfortunately got injured. Luca, stupid red card. Right, let's do the Luca one first. There's been a whole pile of people out there on social shitland, okay, looking for um, looking for Luca to lose the captaincy. Looking, say Luca hasn't done this. There was actually a comment in the chat a minute ago about his poor stats. Ben Allen, I know you're out there. Remind me of those stats that you put out the other day, please. About Luca, uh, Luca's pass rate was poor. I can't. Remember. I'm not gonna identify whoever said this in the chat a minute ago. Lucas' pass rate was appalling. You're wrong. And you're massively wrong. To the point where Ben Allen actually put up some fascinating stats the other day uh, about um, not uh, Luka Milivojevic's uh, pass success rate. I think it was something like... Uh, what was the game before the Norwich game? Uh, West Ham. Yeah, West Ham. I think it was that <laughs> game there. His, his pass success rate was something like 86%, the highest on the pitch. The highest yeah, the but it's, it's all about context, isn't it? Passing sideways is always easier than passing through the lines. And, you know, so I I understand what you're saying. Technically, it may not be correct, but nevertheless, it's what the, it's, it's the context of the pass that matters, you know. So. Yeah, Rob Donovan saying he's got the best stats this season. And go back to your competition, Nigel Crouch has just done some work in the background for us. Nigel, you, you want a job as a producer, mate? He said, so the match is for your competition, Friday the 10th of January, OK? Uh, Sheffield United versus West Ham, uh, Saturday, Palace Arsenal, Chelsea Burnley, Everton Brighton, uh, Leicester Southampton, Man United Norwich, uh, and Wolves Newcastle. And then uh, there's actually a, three or four more there. They're in the chat, so... Just to get your your um, your goals prediction correct, and back to Ian. Stop giving everyone a head start. You know they can do their own research. That's you not. Know, a, we're not going to give them the answers as well, are we? Like you'd know the answer. You were miles. These on the these are rarer than hen's teeth. These mugs. We can't just be giving them willy nilly. Um, and also, uh, the, just a little point. Uh, Ian Costa says uh, if we're going to do some uh, some business which I think we should do. We need to get the deals done early uh, during our injury crisis. <coughs> so let's... Uh, and, and John Knox actually just asked a question in the chat on the same subject. Um, what about St. Tosson from Everton? OK, Ian, I'm going to start with you. Your thoughts on the possibility of this guy joining us because I've got my own views. Right. I don't want him at my club. Um, I think he'll have to suck a lot of hum... Or eat a lot, sorry eat a lot of humble pie um, because of what he said when he went to Everton over us. <clears throat> Having said that, obviously someone that learns from my mistakes, certainly when it comes to IU, I actually think he will suit us. I will think that he will is the type of forward that will chase and harry far more than the likes of Wickham and Benteke, whatever will do akin to the, to the way I will do. <clears throat> and also, a lot will depend on what service we provide him or anyone that joins us, to be perfectly honest. The guy knows where the back of the net is. Um, so, you know, I think it's uh, probably a bit of a no-brainer. We're only going to be paying a part of his wages. We're not going to be paying all of his wages. I think he's on 80 grand or something uh, a week, which should be, should be, uh, okay for us so yeah um, 
My heart says no, my head says yes. Lucy, he can't even get into the Everton team. Is there a, mm. is there a place for him in Sellers Park? Yeah, why not? We need a player. I, I, to be fair, if he sounds like a complete shit house, then I think we need someone who's going to be a bit of aggro up front and, and create some ag- um, issues. You know, just because he didn't want to come to us a, a while ago, does that really preclude him now from... From joining us, I don't think so. It was, it was the. Uh, I think it was. It's not the fact that he went to Everton. I think it was more the fact of what he said when he went to Everton that he was pleased that, that the uh, transfer to Crystal Palace broke down. Oh, sod him then. No, don't want him at the club. <clears throat> good. I'm no, that good. fickle. I'm that fickle. Good, good. I'm glad. Damien Nowell's is out there. He's watching with us. Nigel's out there. Steve Gallo's out there. Uh, that nobody is saying in there that they want it. Ter- Lee Lock was saying, "I don't want that ugly bastard anywhere near this club." Um, we bow. Is he talking about Lock. you or me? No, he's talking. He's actually talking <laughs> about. Uh, uh, he's, he's actually talking about um, Saint Totten, I believe. Um, <laughs> Good. Steve Gallagher's actually a different point of view here, which is what we want. We want to create a discussion. That's the whole point of this show, ladies and gentlemen. Create a, Steve Gallagher's saying, I think he will be good for us and score goals. Yeah. And, yeah. And looking through the other chat here, Nick, you've got Richard yep. Greenwood. Thompson is worth a punt on loan. He needs to prove something. Yeah, you see, and, 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 all, and all, very, all very valid. We play 4 5 1. So where does. Uh, toss and fit in, says Jason Green. Hi, Jason. I hope you're well, mate. Uh, and Max Francis is just doing the, his dream team. He just wants Batshuayi and uh, Watkins from Brentford. Well, so do we all, mate. Okay. But he's, you yeah. know, you, you got to realise, uh, and Gel's quite rightly pointed this out on many occasions about what uh, is it Watkins from Brentford? Uh, they're yeah. going to, they're just going to pull our pants down. With, they're just going to pull our pants down. And they already, we've already had a massive bid turned down from them in the last window. He's improved and still banging and hitting the back of the net. And they're going to just, you know, they're going, well, they're ben, going to be asking. Ben, ben actually on. said last week, didn't he? So he said with the the deal was agreed. It's just that we didn't then take him up on it. So we didn't we didn't explore any further. So oh, it's down to us. Our recruitment policy is bonkers at the minute. I don't think anyone can actually understand what the hell is going on. Uh, Tom Clark Samuel saying the man scores goals no brainer um, but has he has he been prolific Tom I mean he's he has got a, I think there is um, can you remember what his record is in he's got he's played 27 times but he's only started I think 11 of those and scored off the top of my head seven goals from or something stupid so he's not prolific but so that's five more five more than benteke has got in two seasons then yeah no, so, so, and, and I there's think Ben a... Tuckett, go on, Luce. Sorry, there's a few comments on here about um, Giroud. Olivia yeah, Giroud. well, I said last week that I would love Giroud. Giroud's my kind of player. He wins the ball, scores spectacular goals, uh, and he's often in the right place at the right time. Uh, I just can't. I can see a... they will use Giroud and Batshuayi for Wilf against us, knowing that we are desperate. Um, so I can either see it going right to the bloody death, right, you know, the last, last knockings, or we'll just, we'll just play. Maybe, maybe that's the reason for going to, to St. Tosin, as, um, the guys have been saying earlier. Do your business early and then we're not desperate. And then if they want Wilf, they have to, they have to, you know, start offering a serious, serious, uh, proposals rather than trying to mug us off all the time. I just want to make sure, make sure I pick up on Mike's point. Big Mike Howes out there. Hi, Mike. I hope you're well, my friend. Uh, we need that curry very soon, mate. Get it sorted out. Uh, we have no loyalty. He, he will have no loyalty to us. Talk about Tosson again. He'll have no loyalty to us after what he said about coming to us before going to Everton. Stay away. He's, he's I don't care for Mike. That doesn't, that doesn't matter, though, does it? I mean, if he's loyal to himself, the only thing he needs to do is score goals. You know, because that's his career. If he, if he wants to better himself, the only way he does it is scoring goals. I mean, I'm surprised not even no one said bring Sorlock back. <laughs> so actually, somebody did ingest in the chat the other day. Somebody yeah. actually did in, the, in that. Got yeah, but say ingest, but he's scoring goals. But he's, he's, he's scoring goals for the red line in Cyprus, isn't it? Yeah, but we can't score against Derby. 
I think that's the system. You know, sorry, Lucy. Lucy, you wanted to say something? Sorry, uh, Nigel Crouch is just saying uh, Townsend didn't want to come to us when he when we first tried to sign him and went off to Newcastle. Yeah, I saw that. So it, so it can work. No, I, I honestly going back to the Chelsea thing. I honestly think that Crystal Palace Football Club and Chelsea Football Club will be doing lots of mixed business. It's just a question of when in the window and what in the window. Uh, and Ian's already alluded to my. I think the. I put this in our group chat today, the Red and Blue Review group chat today, or yesterday, I think it was, that my opinion is that the Tossum thing, the Czech Tossum thing, or Cheng Tossum, whatever his name is, is probably just a bit of a ruse. Probably just a ruse to give Chelsea the hurry up on making a decision on Batishwai. Um, I don't think, if, if I'm honest, in my opinion, and what do I know? I don't know anything. But my opinion is I don't think... Uh, Palace will touch Tossum with the, with the barge pole. And what we're doing is we're using it as leverage to get back to Shrey. And I honestly believe that's where we'll, we'll go. Okay. Uh, I I'd might... like to think we're that clever. You don't think we are? I said I'd like to think we are. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, what else have we got? I've got a long one from George Bawagru. Uh He was talking about a lack of trophies I've been in the Premier League uh, seven years now. I think it dis- that despite injuries, we should now we should survive now. Yeah, I'm not so sure yet, mate. It's not over yet. Um, we've had <laughs> this we've is had, my concern. Yeah, yeah. People are looking up. Okay, don't be afraid to look down. Okay, we're not there yet. We're halfway through the season. We've got a great point. What are we are now? Twenty what? Twenty seven? Twenty eight? Twenty seven. We've got a great points tally. You're right, but. We've got to get through this period, okay? It's not a negative. I'm not being negative. I'm just being realistic. It's, it's understanding the cost to the squad of getting where we've got the way we've got there. And I think this is this is the issue for me, and this is what I was touching on earlier, is that having run your regular 14 into the ground, <clears throat> we're now looking at maybe a lost streak, well, uh, over the coming weeks, um, you know, pinching a point here, pinching a point there. I still think we'll st- stay up. Don't get me wrong. No, no. But I think people people need to be pragmatic about this. Stop lauding and saying, look where we are, look where we are. Yeah, we're only there this week. Next week, we could be two places further down. The week after, we could be three places further down, you know. And then what good will it be me saying, look where we are, look where we are, you know. Let's take... One game at a time, but actually understand the cost to the squad of what miracles Roy and the team have, have managed to pull off over the last couple of months. And it, and it can't, obviously, it can't continue. There's a couple of interesting ones. Okay, uh, I was going to continue with George Iwagwu's point. Okay, he's talking about trophies. Uh, he said, we shouldn't be looking over our shoulders. We, we don't have to be looking over our shoulders now. Why not? I'd like the panel to please cover this topic about going for a cup. Well, after today's performance, mate, uh, I don't think we're going to we're going to go and touch on that. Tyler K. Go for a red and blue news mug. That, that's the only cup you can get this year. Yeah, exactly, George. Okay. The only podcast you can watch, ladies and gentlemen. You won't find that on any other uh, podcast out there. So um, I do want to talk, touch on Tyler K.'s point. Um, is he deluded? Is he a madman? Because he's a friend of mine. You tell me. Uh, I would swap Batshuayi and RLC for Wilf all day long with no extra money. Oh. Um, no. Because that values RLC at 50 million and he's injured. So <clears throat> that is bonkers. Uh, I, would, yeah, I would say RLC, Batshuayi and 30 million. Really? Lucy. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Lucy, your thoughts? Uh, I can't see it happening. Neither can I. But I have to say, Ian, um, you've got to realise is Wolf is now 27. Uh, RLC is what? Was he 23, 24? But he's uh, injured. He's, he's injured, 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 injured. Okay. At the end of the day, if, if you, RLC. If we think by the end of January, is it? If you think RLC. By the end of January? RLC is not worth it more than thirty million <clears throat> as things currently stand, right? Why? Is it England international? 
Well, why is he worth more? You tell me why he's worth more than 30 million at the minute. Age on, age on his favour, England international, absolutely on fire when he got injured. He'll be back from injury any minute now, OK? He'll probably be back in training shortly, I would think. Age has, age has got nothing to do with it because it doesn't tell you what's going to happen in the future. It puts the value it on his contract. I, I, I agree that because he signed a contract, you're going to have to pay the money, but he's not worth more than 30 million at the minute. Okay. No one's going to pay, no one would pay more than 30 million for him at the minute. <laughs> Lee Lockwood just said, injured player, when does that ever stop us signing someone? <laughs> exactly, but that's the point. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. Man. You're right. <laughs> Wait till he sees our training pitch. Right, okay. <laughs> it's Sellers Park, I've told you that already. Now, okay, let's do the Zaha. Let's go. I mean, oh my God, look at the time. Lucy, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think she's going to kill me, everybody. She's, you, you don't know what she's like. Uh, she, she got, you've got this little pussycat on screen. You wait till she gets me off air. She's going to kick the crap out of me. Um, so let's do the Wilf Zaha thing, people, OK? Forget player exchanges. I want your, your opinion, everybody, uh, out there as well. Lucy, I'm going to start with you. Would you sell Wilf Zaha this window? And if not, why not? Oh, no, I don't want him to go. He's brilliant. He's Palace, and I love him. But his value is going down. We need some money. So he either goes now or never, and he's going to go. He wants to go. I love him to bits. I don't want him to go. And I think today's performance shows everything why we need to keep him, but I don't think we will. Yeah. Or every every reason why we need to sell him. Um, <clears throat> buy low, sell high. Wilf set his highest... That he will be, unless he scores another thirty goals between now and the end of the season. <clears throat> sell him now, but buy someone before you sell him. Right? Otherwise, we will just get absolutely taken to the cleaners for anyone we go in for. <clears throat> um, yeah, no, he's got to go. It's time to go. Let him go. Let him go on his own, um, on his own terms, and everything else. And, you know, good luck to the guy. You know, he's done everything we could have ever asked for him to do. And more. So it, it will go with my blessing. Uh, Mark Butchell says, today, today show why we, you know, why we shouldn't sell him, OK, because we need him. Uh, no, too many injuries, says Rob Donovan. Uh, we are so average without Wilf, says Away Day Eagle. Uh, Steve Gallagher says, yes. Nigel says, here until the summer, in his opinion. Uh, Keith Diamond said, buy before you sell, no question. Uh, Greg Ellis, everything will go downhill once Zaha leaves. Hosson would would likely leave, and that would mean a new manager coming in, and I can't see the rest of it. Oh, and it spirals out of control. Uh, Jason Green saying, Defo, agree, buy before we sell. Um, very, very mixed opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry about uh, Joel missing us this evening. Um, I think what we'll do is we're going to knock it on the head there. Get your entries in for the um, for the mug. Uh, if you don't, Ian will be crying. He's got nothing else to do but to create another spreadsheet with your answers, which is what he does all day, every day. That's all he does at the moment. He doesn't do anything for us. He just creates uh, spreadsheets. Lucy, thank you for jumping on. God, I'm sorry, Ian, you wanted to say something. Any, any final words from you, mate? No, you'll be hearing from my spreadsheet. <laughs> Solicitor. <laughs> Lucy, anything, any, any final thoughts from you? No, no, not at all. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you for it. being there. Thank you. Yeah, and she's always there in the background. Her and Greg are always there. Before I sign off, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say a couple of other thank yous, if you don't mind. Finally, a continued thank you to John Lyons, Graham Kitcher, Kevin Lyons and Tom Clark Samuel for your continued support. It's your support. And you know what I mean by your support in the background that helps us get this show out on a weekly basis uh, and we, helps us plan for the future. If there's any of you hundred lovely people out there would like to help give us some extra support in the background to join our growing numbers, please contact either myself, Ian, Lucy or any others at the, at the page. Just drop me a message. Okay. If any of you would like to help us, uh, do what we're doing, and I'm talking about uh, outside support off the show in the background. Um, we'll give you some details if you contact us after the show or sometimes during the week. If you're watching us on this podcast, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to go to our website, uh, www.redandbluereview.co.uk, to pick up our full library of previous shows. On behalf of myself, Nick Philpott, Lucy Usher, and Ian Lyons, I wish you a safe and happy week. 
Good night, everybody, and Happy New Year. Good night. Cheers, Dan. Happy New Year. Yeah, bye-bye.